Studio Ghibli has gained a cult-like following for its high-quality animation and masterful storytelling throughout the decades. However, the many symbolic themes in the studio's films have given rise to eerie legends and dark theories surrounding its often quirky and magical films. A lot of these theories aren't confirmed and Hayao Miyazaki, the co-founder of Studio Ghibli, has denied some of them. But I thought it's still something fun to share with you guys. Tonight we're diving into the crazy and disturbing theories and events of three Studio Ghibli films, starting with My Neighbor Totoro. In my Neighbor Totoro, the age old saying truth is stranger than fiction takes on a disturbing significance as darker truths hide beneath its whimsical surface, along with the uncanny connection to a brutal murder that happened in Japan. My Neighbor Totoro unfolds the tale of two young sisters, Satsuki and Mei, who move to the countryside with their father to be closer to their ailing mother in the hospital. In the enchanting countryside, they discover a realm inhabited by playful and mythical creatures, with the iconic Totoro as a gentle forest spirit. However, a haunting theory suggests an alternate narrative, where Mei and Satsuki are actually dead, and Totoro is speculated to be the god of death, painting the beloved flick as a twisted version of Alice in Wonderland, where instead of entering a fun-filled magical world, Mei and Satsuki are traversing the realm of the departed, with Totoro as their otherworldly guide. This eerie perspective gains momentum as fans point to the film's famed cat bus cruising past Grave Road, and in this scene, one of the destinations of the cat bus reads, Path to the Graveyard. In another scene, Mei is also found sitting near the Jizo statues. In Japanese beliefs, Jizo protects the souls of children who died before their parents, shielding them from malevolent forces and ensuring their safe passage to the other realm. And I just find it odd that these easter eggs hinting at death are littered throughout the film. And it's supposed to be a children's film, right? But hey, I fucking love it. It gets even creepier. There is a famous fan theory about the film that just refuses to die. It's so famous, in fact, that the studio had to release a statement denying its accusation back in 2007, and it pertains to the Sayama incident. The Sayama incident was an infamous case in Japan, where two sisters ended up dead, one brutally murdered and the other committing suicide shortly after. On May 1st, 1963, 16-year-old Yoshi Nakata went missing on her way home from school. Later that night, a ransom note arrived at her house. The demand, 200,000 yen, approximately $600 at the time, was to be delivered near her residence at 12am on May 2nd, the next day. In a tense and covert operation, Yoshi's sister took counterfeit money to the specified location, with a multitude of policemen strategically placed around the site. As the atmosphere grew thick with anticipation, a man would soon approach her, even managing to exchange a few words. But alas, the mysterious figure grew suspicious and disappeared into the cover of the night before the police could apprehend him. As dawn broke on May 4th, Yoshi Nakata's lifeless body was discovered, buried in an alley nearby a farm. The grim reality unfolded as the police confirmed that she had been raped and murdered. In a heart-wrenching twist, Yoshi's sister, the one who delivered the counterfeit money, would later succumb to despair and commit suicide. I mean, she was probably filled with guilt because they were so close to apprehending her sister's killer, but they somehow managed to let him slip away. Curiously, it is said that after Yoshi's sister found her sibling dead, she spoke of seeing an apparition of a cat. The setting of the film also takes place in Tokorozawa City, which is next to Sayama City, where the incident took place which makes a lot of sense to call this film My Neighbor. Furthermore, in the beginning of the movie, an elderly woman is seen unpacking beside a box that reads Sayama Tea, and the hospital in the film, Sichikoku Byoyin, has a real-life counterpart in Sayama, Japan, called Hachikoku Byoyin. That's a lot of coincidences. <laughs> now, Studio Ghibli has dismissed all claims that the movie was inspired by the Sayama incident. I mean, of course they would, right? Why would they want to tie their kid's movie to a very gruesome murder? But I don't know, I would like to think that they were just paying a subtle but beautiful tribute to the victims of this horrific incident. Whisper of the Heart With the seemingly innocent world of Whisper of the Heart, unexpected allegations of suicide and depression started to emerge. Whisper of the Heart explores the coming-of-age journey of a teenage girl named Shizuku Tsukishima, an avid reader with a passion for writing. Shizuku's life takes a captivating turn when she discovers that all the books she borrowed from the library were previously checked out by a mysterious boy named Seiji Amasa who also happens to be a violinist. The film encourages one to embrace their dreams and passions, resonating with universal themes of love, creativity, and the transformative power of pursuing one's true calling. But here's where this simple slice of life takes a turn into some seriously unsettling territory. In the early 2010s, Whisper of the Heart, originally released in 1995, had a rerun on Japanese television, giving birth to a chilling urban legend, implying that the film may have triggered a series of suicides. Now, why 
Why the Sudden Doom and Gloom? The film was originally released in 1995, and theatre-goers who, at the time, were about the same age as its protagonists, are now entering their 30s and navigating the harsh realities of adulthood. And I guess watching it as a youth and then revisiting it as an adult supposedly made some people think that they had wasted their entire lives. And with Shizuku and Seiji finding their callings and sweet romance before high school, it didn't exactly lift everyone's spirits about their own lives. While there wasn't any concrete evidence and official numbers of confirmed suicides, forums were abuzz with talks of depression and dark thoughts. A message board titled Whisper of the Heart Suicide Center even appeared, and it was filled with text-based art of people hanging themselves and chilling messages like See y'all in the afterlife. Spirited away, with its rich and imaginative storytelling, breathtaking animation and profound themes, it's no wonder that Spirited Away holds the crown as one of the most highly praised animated films of all time. And it's personally one of my favourite films. But is it simply the innocent children's story we think it is? The film, lauded for its rich storytelling and evocative animation, follows the tale of Chihiro, a young girl thrust into the mystical realm during her journey to a new home. After her parents are transformed into pigs by the sinister witch Yubaba, Chihiro begins to navigate this enigmatic world and embarks on a quest to rescue her family by working in a bathhouse. However, the film conceals a disturbing metaphor, hinting at prostitution and perhaps even human trafficking. One of the key settings of Spirited Away is the bathhouse, and bathhouses were commonplace in Japan during the Edo period, and occasionally served as clandestine brothels where women offered both bathing and sexual services to visiting men. And this is reflected in Spirited Away as evidence surface within the bathhouse itself. This sign, prominently displaying hot water, hints at Yuna or hot water woman, a term linked to women in the prostitution industry during the Edo period, who would help the men bathe and even engage in sexual play. But now here's where Spirited Away starts playing some serious mind games. Chihiro can be seen relinquishing her name for a new one, mirroring practices in the sex industry that's commonplace even today. Sen, Chihiro's new name bestowed by Yubaba, translates to a thousand in Japanese. Is this mere coincidence? Or could it signify Chihiro's price tag as a companion? And the madam who would run these bathhouses in Japan was suitably referred to as Yubaba, the name of the main antagonist of the film. This is further deepened as Chihiro, with each passing moment in the spirit world, begins to forget her original name. Delving into the film's symbology reveals more than subtle nods to practices found in Japanese bathhouses of old. Just like in this scene, where No Face's persistent offering of gold tokens mirrors the transactional nature of such establishments. Speaking of No Face, the enigmatic character in the bathhouse becomes obsessed with Chihiro. Now, the innocent mind would assume that No Face is simply a spirit with an affinity with our protagonist because she was the one that led him into the bathhouse. However, his constant offers of gold and bath tokens to Chihiro suggest an attempt to buy her services despite her underaged status. His obsession is said to mirror the value that men would place on the virginity of a woman. And nothing is more valuable in a brothel than taking a girl's virginity. The Ghibli Curse Now, this one's a bonus one, but I just find it very interesting. But according to this legend, whenever a Studio Ghibli movie airs on Japanese TV, a weird phenomenon occurs, causing a ripple effect in the stock market and resulting in a negative financial impact. Allegedly, this unexpected side effect of animated masterpieces has led to a scenario where stock traders reportedly monitor their TV schedules. Not for the latest financial news, but to check if beloved Ghibli films like Totoro or Howl's Moving Castle are making an appearance. Interestingly, a former stockbroker has even delved into the statistical aspects of this myth. His findings reveal an intriguing correlation. On the day following the broadcast of a Ghibli movie in Japan, the currency experiences a decline. Specifically, this has happened 28 out of 35 times, according to his analysis. Now obviously, this is just a speculation. I do not advise any of you to invest in the Japanese stock market based on Studio Ghibli film appearances. But I just thought that it's an interesting thing that people have observed. And thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This video was actually made because of a suggestion by one of you. So let me know what other weird, dark, or creepy stories you guys would like me to talk about next. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.